History of the Computer by Jack Barnett 21 The Abacus The personal computer has its history in various machines going back centuries. One of these was the Abacus. There were Mesopotamian, Egyptian, Persian, Greek, Roman, Chinese, Indian, Japanese, Korean and Russian versions of the Abacus. They're hardly a computer, but of course people were able to do calculations upon them. When we look at important steps in computing, Charles Babbage's com uh, mechanical difference machine was one of these. Back in the 18th century, Babbage was working on a mechanical computer. His invention, the mechanical difference machine, was never built during his lifetime. But recently, one was put together by Babbage enthusiasts. It looked like that. By winding various handles, this moved cogs and was actually able to work out calculations. Next, the punch card machine of Herman Hollerith. I think the first serious computer. The first automatic data processing system was used to count the 1890 US Census. It was developed by Herman Hollerith, a statistician who wor had worked for the Census Bureau. The system used a hand punch to record data as holes in a 10 pound note size punch card and a tabulating machine to count them. The machine contained a, a spring loaded pin for each potential hole in the card. When a card was placed in the reader and the handle pushed down, the pins passed through the holes and thereby closed electrical circuits causing counters to be added and then a lid on the sorting box would open. Without Hollerith's machines, the 1890 census would have taken 10 years to complete whereas with them it took under three years to count 62 million cards, saving the US government $5 million. Hollerith went on to sell his machines throughout the, the world. And these were for a variety of accounting functions. In 1911, this company was merged into the company we now know as IBM. Herman Hollerith used a machine to punch specific holes in his cards. In one place a hole might represent a male. He might leave the hole next to it unpunched for a female or punch the hole next to it and so on. Here's a simple card and an actual card. So if you had male, female, you punch the female. Age checked, yes. Marriage checked, yes. Number of children. And you see you go through and punch on three there. Collecting information meant punching the information onto a card. Now having done this, you needed to feed that information into your machine to read it. So you put it on a card reader. The whole process took three years for 62 million cards to be counted. Here are the various processes being done. And you can see a lot of people in, were involved, not just Herman Hollerith himself. What with ba Babbage's mechanical computer and Hollerith's punch card computer, these were followed by the ENIAC. This American computing machine could be considered to be the very first serious computer. 
This machine needed to be reprogrammed every time it was used. Electronic numerical integrator and calculator. The ENIAC computer of 1943. The ENIAC was invented at the University of Pennsylvania, USA and made between 1943 and 46. It occupied 1,800 square feet, used 18,000 vacuum tubes or valves, and weighed about 50 tons. When you can consider today's computers sitting lightly on the desktop, this thing was just gigantic. Here it is, and you see six people inside it, two of whom are wearing military uniforms. Imagine the computer with hundreds of valves. It would be an immense size. Once transistors replaced valves, then the computer machines were able to be much smaller. What did valves and transistors do? Well, they altered voltage levels. Here's a, a, a comparison between the size of a transistor and the size of a valve. Transistors took the place of valves and as a consequence, computers got smaller. Once you change that, then the whole machine can become tiny. When you look here at these two people working beside a machine, the yellow square shows a whole block of valves. When valves were replaced by transistors, then the size of the computer changed to something much smaller, perhaps looking like that. One of the things you need to look at is what they're reading. Early computers didn't have screens, but showed the result on ticker tape, like these workers or students are reading. When Bill Gates was 13, 14, he's supposed to have spent his teenage weekends writing programs for a local university computer and getting the results weeks later on ticker tape like this. The IBM home computer. Now IBM wanted other computer makers to make programs for its home computer. So they gave out all the details of the computer and made them available to anyone who wanted them copyright free. This was a pretty poor move. Other makers wrote programs for the IBM machine and then they copied the machine itself and manufactured it all done legally. This should be seen as a great business blunder. Why would you give away the designs for your machine? 1984 Apple computers. Apple computers have been seen as the computer for designers. IBM computers have been seen as the computer for businessmen. While pictures, sound and colour were important to Apple from the very early stages, they did not become important to businessmen till comparatively recently. One other tiny thing, the Apple mouse only has one button on it. 1985 Microsoft Windows. Now Bill Gates created an operating system, DOS, Disk Operating System, but he copyrighted it. So if you wanted to use it on your machine, whichever company or country was making the machine, you needed to pay Bill Gates for it. This way, with all the PC makers in the world 
paying him for his DOS program, Bill Gates became the richest man in the world. I don't think you can finish, you can complete a brief history of computers without mentioning the internet. In 1990, Tim Berners-Lee, now Sir Tim Berners-Lee, working with Robert Kahlo at CERN, proposed a hypertext system which is the first start of the internet as we know it today. Now I'm sure I could have mentioned other things in this brief history but those are the, the important things and now I'll come to an end. Thank you.